Thank you for joining us live on KEXP. I'm Cheryl Waters, and we are so happy to be here in the KEXP studios with a band we love oh so dearly. It's Lucius. Welcome. So great to have you here. The new album called Second Nature, and we are just about to get a treat. Live music from Lucius. It's been 24 days since I knew your name. 24 hours till I get on this plane. And 24 words I could rearrange to try and explain what I'm going through. You're the heart attack I'm used to. It's hard to breathe without you in my chest. I'm uncomfortable, but I need you. Wish that you could see it like this.
day now And I'll believe it Believe it when I say it out loud But right now I'm digging through the heart Looking for the words that I never find Right now I'm digging through the heart Looking for the words trying to make a mind That is Lucius live on KEXP. I have to pull myself together right now. Just about in tears. That was beautiful.
Lucius live on KEXP. Can you do that one again? <laughs> Just want to hear it on repeat all day long, live. <laughs> that was so amazing. It's incredible to have you back here in the studios. It's been way too long and it's always such a pleasure to have you. I love that you just bring the whole thing. You got the hair, you got the clothes, you got the band, everybody just bring in 100% always. How does it feel to be back out on the road? It feels really good. Yeah, it so feels good. really good to be doing something that we've been sitting with, you know, in our in our homes, in our rooms for such a long time, and now we get to share it and have a, an exchange of energy and get to come to some of our favorite places like Seattle. Mm -hmm. Well, your wonderful new long-awaited album, Second Nature, is such a musical salve for grief, encouraging listeners to just sort of dance their way through the darkness and difficult moments of life. And it feels like it was a record that you needed to make. Why was that? Well, I think, you know, personally, I was going through a lot and, you know, Danny and I got a divorce at the, you know, right before the pandemic or before the lockdown. And um, then all of us collectively were, you know, really isolated and away from our, our friends and family and dealing with a lot of grief, both because of pandemic and also, you know, just normal life and... Um, at first, it was like we were delving into this very difficult moment, and then it felt like, well, the, the only way out of it, because we can't actually get out, is just to sort of convince ourselves that we can find light in this darkness, that there is a way to turn something difficult into something joyful, or at least, I don't know, yeah, convince ourselves of, of that possibility, and maybe that'll actually be the medicine that helps get you through it. And that is actually what it, what it did for us. Well, as you said, it deals with some very serious emotional topics, but it is filled with so much joy and light and love. And as I said a minute ago, it's like you wanted to dance away the darkness. And I, from the outset, was it going to be a dance record? Because I know Brandy, who co-produced this in some interviews that I read, she thought maybe it could go in the Americana vein, especially after your acoustic album. She sort of heard strains there. And the other producer, Dave Cobb, was like, let's go disco all the way. So where, how did it start to take shape? I think that was definitely part of it, you know, Dave planting this disco seed. But we were also just trying to stay super open to writing whatever came up. And uh, like maybe three or four songs in, Around the same time, we had been doing a lot of um, like streaming live concerts and things during lockdown. And one of the things we did was a, a dance party. We, um, we invited people to come do a dance party one night with us. We set up two apps, of Zoom, and then there was another one that was a DJ one. So everyone would mute their Zoom, but everyone was hearing the music live together. Um, and it was like, oh, this is what we need. And obviously what all these other people are feeling too and um so we wrote we I think right after that was um dance around it right and really felt like it set this intention of just wanting to dance you know dance through the darkness like you say so um yeah that was kind of the beginning of our where we were heading with it yeah it's definitely hard to stand still listening to the songs on this song when you were just playing next to normal there at the end of that set. I was dancing around over here, but trying to keep it, you know, a little subdued so I wouldn't distract you <laughs> no. from this pristine recording. But you truly embody the term, your favorite musician's favorite musician. <laughs> and having such a wide musical family, why were Brandy and Dave the perfect people to help you make this record? I think because they were the unexpected ones. And I think that is sort of a staple in the Lucius family, like do something that people aren't going to see coming, you know, keep ourselves guessing, keep other people guessing, because that's what keeps us inspired and, and intrigued by art and life. And, um, you know, when Cobb said like, let's make a disco record, like, I really want to see this through. And Brandy was all about it. And I think, you know, that was part of the excitement for us all. Like, 
you would think we would make an Americana record together. And there are glimpses of that. There will always be glimpses of that in what we do because, you know, it's it, the two of our voices together um, and a lot of the music that we're inspired by. But it just felt like the right creative move. It felt like what people... I think it was actually a gift at the end of this um, <laughs> lockdown, I should say. Maybe the pandemic's not totally, <laughs> hasn't totally ended yet, but at least people are getting out and we're seeing even in fashion, everywhere we go, it's, it's a very colorful world right now. And I think people, because people's um, desire and necessity for it. And I think that, that carried through in our, in our work, thankfully. When you think about the hardships that you've gone through in the time that you've known each other and, of course, this past few years that you talked about, I'm struck by the friendship, Jess and Holly, that you two have. And you've called each other confidants and co-writers. And can you talk a little bit about how that friendship's grown and how it stays strong over so many years? I mean, it was so touching to see you grab hands <laughs> during that last song. And I, bring get it down. Dur- I got a little choked up. I got a little choked up. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean... With every record that goes by, we're writing, it's like our coffee talk or our therapy or something, you know, we sit in a room and we just kind of go through life events and what's going on for ourselves, just talking as friends. And you kind of keeping notes in the back of your mind, like, oh, I really liked that thing she said, that one line, that was intriguing. What's that about? Let's talk more about it and let's build a song around it. Um... And yeah, you just, I mean, you become close when you're doing that with someone. It's a very intimate relationship and like you don't, um, you also get to see your own experience from an outside perspective as well, which has um, been enlightening, I think, for both of us. Yeah, and I think we do have this unique um, experience in that we share most of our life together on the road, writing um, as friends um, even outside of, of band time. And um, because of that, we really do see each other's lives. You know, Holly's a part of my, my grief and my joys, and I'm a part of hers. We all are a part of each other's. And um, because of that, we really do, we are able to write from the other's perspective almost in a very, um, I don't know, in a very unique way. Well, you are in very high demand to write for and perform with and tour with so many artists. I mean, the list is so long. Cheryl Crow, Brandi Carlile, The War on Drugs, Tweety, Mavis Staples, John Legend, mm-hmm. Roger Waters. I mean, how much, how much time do we have here? <laughs> it must be so great to get back to your own music, be back in front of your audience performing these songs. What has this tour felt like? Yeah, it's felt like what we've needed to return to. You know, I mean, I think all of those experiences were life-changing, really. And um, we love collaborating, obviously. We are constantly collaborating. Um, But being able to see somebody else's musical world and be a part of it and immerse ourselves has been a a great learning experience. But we we always said, even in front of 350,000 people at Zocalo Square, there's nothing like having your own audience singing along to your songs even if it's just a couple hundred and um, it's it's been really rewarding and it feels like everybody has needed it as much as we have which is a a real gift. Well I just told you before we started recording about my eight-year-old neighbor Mm -hmm. who's going to be out at the gorge seeing you and singing along to all the songs (laughs) and I remember the last time I saw you out at the gorge it was Holly's birthday. Oh you were out at Sasquatch. I think oh, that was yeah, in 2014. That's right. And that's just going to be an amazing show. It must be so fun to be out there playing with Brandy and feel like family in such a beautiful setting. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Well, have a great time. Um, the new record, it resonates so much with people. Again, just filled with so much light and love. It's really what we need right now. And it's so wonderful always to have all of you come by the studio you sound amazing and I got to see the live show in Philly and I have my 
showing you my little pins. <laughs> uh, by the way, I wanted to ask, you always do so much with your costumes and matching and your hair over the years. I've seen so many different styles. I'm assuming those aren't wigs, but you can never tell your wigs always look so good. Never no seen. shame. Never, never. Know. But I will, the reason I was going to ask is that you've had so many different styles from the short asymmetrical to the bob, yeah. and now your hair is very long, and mm -hmm. so many people, that was a result of the pandemic. Yeah. And that's what I was going to ask. Is that, is that the pandemic style? It's pandemic style. hair with a little help. It's, it's enhanced <laughs> pandemic <Yeah>. Got <laughs> mode. It. We don't need to tell any inside um. secrets. <laughs> Yeah, it's fun to, to, again, keep people guessing and, and being able to just change and evolve with the music. And yeah, we've always been inspired by artists who were doing that, like David Bowie and Bjork. And so it's been, a, it's been something that we've, we've taken great joy doing. And, um, but thank you so much for, for having us at KXP. We've really missed you guys and so appreciate the support. Well, thank you so much. We appreciate you too. We're celebrating 50 years this year, wow, championing, incredible. sharing great music. And we're so happy to have had you as part of our history and to have discovered you early in your career. And thank you so much for your generosity always in making time for KEXP. Always. Thank you. We're live here in the KEXP studios with Lucius. Second Nature is the newest album out on Mom and Pop Records. And we're so appreciative of our listeners and donors. We are our listener-powered station here at KEXP, supported by you. So thank you so much. If you want to learn more about us, you can visit kexp.org. And if you want to watch videos from Lucius, this new one, and others from the past, and discover so many other bands to love, you can visit our YouTube channel. In fact, you can subscribe to that as well. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure always to have Lucius live here in the KEXP studios. Yay. Thank you. That was fun. We did it. We did. So <laughs> oh my gosh, thank you. And I give you a hug. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.